Hello, this is Mary Chibb with Bentley Systems, back to talk more about the railing tool in Open Buildings Designer. Today I'm going to look at the creating railing post, the last piece in our kit of parts. I have created a railing post project cell library. Again, the naming of these cell libraries is important. This one needs to start with railing posts, no spaces. The default configuration is set to find the cells for post in any library that starts with the phrase railing post within the selected workspace or work set. Each post created will be a 3D model within this file or cell library. I am currently in the default model. Now we will start by creating a simple post. Unlike balusters, posts are not parametric. Since handrail heights are fairly standard, based on building codes, posts usually adhere to a couple of standard sizes. I'm going to create a simple circular post designed to support a handrail cap. I have already established the center and overall height of my post with a construction line in my default model. I will copy this model to create the model for my circular post with a diameter of 42 millimeters. I'll switch over to the solids tools on the modeling workflow. I can make this entire post using the cylinder tool. I'll start with the base, which has a 75 millimeter diameter, so I will set the radius to 37.5 millimeters and the height to 10 millimeters. I will place that first solid at the zero zero origin. Next, I'll create the post. I'll set the radius to 21 millimeters and the height to 940 millimeters. I want to make sure my ACS locks are off, and then I will place this solid at the center of the top face of the base. Next, I will place the support piece for the handrail cap. I'll set the radius to 10 millimeters and the height to 100 millimeters. I will place this solid at the center of the top face of the post. Now I'm going to convert all the geometry to a smart solid. Next, I will apply family and part information to the geometry. I'm going to apply specialty interior, handrail, to the post in the base. But apply material chrome to the cap support. So this post actually has two different parts or materials assigned. So that is the post. Now, I thought about adding clips to this post to hold a glass panel, but I found it was actually better to model the clips with the glass panel in the parametric library, as then they turn and rotate with the panels. Now, in some cases, you might need additional variations of a post to create end conditions or corner conditions, but this simple post will work for all those conditions. Now, unlike all the other cells, the placement of post is based on finding the center of the range of geometry in the cell, rather than the zero, zero origin. Now, this post is symmetrical, so the origin and the center of the range happen to align. They're at the same place. But let's create a variation of this post with a handrail bracket, so that we can see what happens to the placement point when the post is not symmetrical. I'll make a copy of this model in order to create the post with the bracket.
I have decided I will place the center of the handrail 900 millimeters above the floor and 90 millimeters from the center of the post. I'll start by placing a construction circle to represent the 38 millimeter handrail, 90 millimeters off the center and 900 millimeters above the base. So I can snap to the center of the base, then type S to rotate the compass to the side orientation, then type O to reset the origin of the compass, and input 90 to define the offset in the X direction. I'll type O again to reset the origin, and input 900 to move the origin vertically to the desired height, and then data point to accept and place the circle. Now I will use the linear solid tool and set the width to 25 millimeters with a height of 6 millimeters. Starting at the center of the handrail and rotating my compass to the side orientation, I will draw down 75 millimeters and then over to overlap the post. I'll move the geometry over to align the centers. I can also use the fillet tool to round the edges. And even create a feature cut for the handrail. Now I will convert this piece to a smart solid. And then add family and part. We have now modeled a post variation with a handrail bracket. Now let me see if I can explain what that does to the placement point of the post. I'm going to use a clip volume to help explain this simply because we can create a clip volume from the range of elements in the model. I'll open the Create Clip Volume dialog and select Apply Fitted Clip Volume. That creates a volume around the entire range of elements in the cell. Now, if I were to draw a smart line by snapping to the center of this clip volume, We can see that the start point of that line is somewhere in the middle of the post and bracket, and that would actually be the placement point of this post, not the center of the post as we might expect. So if we want to maintain the placement point for the post at the center of the post, then we need to adjust the range of the cell. And I can do this by adding some construction points to the cell to balance out the geometry. Now I'll match my construction attributes to create these points because we do want them to be constructions. Then I'm going to use a tool called Place Active Point. And place a point at the outer extents of the bracket and the post at one corner of the cell. Then I'm going to make a copy of that point by rotating it 180 degrees around the zero, 00 origin. Now I will create that clip volume again to show that the center of the range now aligns with the center of the post.
This will make our cell behave more predictably when we use this post in the railing tool. Before I finish, let's take a look at some of the other cells I have created. So this one is a simple wall bracket that might be used to place a handrail along a wall. Note that I've added a point to this one also to balance out that range. In this case, I'm creating a placement point at the center line of the handrail. Now this one is just a simple circular post with a 50 millimeter diameter. I have also created a couple of side mount options. These actually extend down below the base ACS, which is assumed to be the floor line. Again, I have added the points to maintain the center of the post as the placement point. And this is the other side mount post. I also have a few square posts. And finally, let me show you that I have a post that is simply a construction line. I am using this one to create a gap in a rail. In other words, in some cases, I need to create intermediate posts in order to create panels, like panels of glass, for instance. But I actually don't want a post there, I just want that gap. And that's what this particular cell does. We'll look at that in more detail in the next video when we talk about railing settings. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.